it seems that the Earth's continents were formed by vast plates of rock separating, as if floating on the currents in the viscous mantle beneath. Over the Earth's history, these plates have drifted to form the continental land masses as we know them today. Yet the Earth is not static. The movement continues still. Where the continental plates collide, they grind and jostle with unimaginable force, forming great mountain ranges like the Alps, the Himalayas, or the Rockies. Beneath the sea in the mid-Atlantic, there is a huge mountain ridge where a new ocean bed is created, pushing the continents apart. Where the plates of the Earth's surface meet is the home of earthquakes and volcanoes. Most notorious of all is the ring of fire stretching from South America, along the Pacific coast of the USA and Canada, out across the North Pacific to China and Japan. A similar fault line runs from the Azores in the Atlantic through Southern Europe and on through Asia, California that the eyes of the world are focused watching and waiting for what could be the worst earthquake disaster in Western history. The famous hills of San Francisco are just one indication of the pressures within the Earth. California is scarred by the San Andreas Fault. where the land on the western side has been moving northward in a series of jolts or quakes. No geological formation on Earth has been studied more intensely. Lasers are used to detect the tiniest movement across the fault. A laser and a reflector are set up at known survey points on opposite sides of the fault. An aircraft records air temperature and atmospheric pressure so that the laser readings can be adjusted accordingly. The system works by measuring the time the beam takes to travel between the laser and the reflector. Even the smallest movement in the fault can be measured, down to an accuracy of less than half an inch in 10 miles. Barry Raleigh of the U.S. Geological Service explains how the fault is moving. I'm standing just about on the San Andreas Fault where it ruptured in 1906, running along the east shore of the San Andreas Lake. We've been making very precise measurements of distance across the San Andreas Fault and close to it throughout California for about the past 10 years using lasers and more recently using quasars and radio telescopes. What these data show is that California up until the last year has been getting shorter in compression but then in the past year, it's actually sprung back and begun to extend in area. The forces that hold it together are, are actually getting smaller and the tendency for the fault to slip and produce a great earthquake is much greater. Here's a cross section of the fault. Two forces are at work. The movement of the plates past each other and the pressure of their mass pushing them together. If this pressure relaxes, the force in the other direction takes over, and the plates suddenly shudder past each other. That's an earthquake. So what can science do to predict such a happening? We're drilling a hole right now, close to the San Andreas Fault, down to a depth of perhaps 4,000 feet. It's possible, once you have such a hole, to measure how much stress is there in the rocks. It's a measurement of the tendency for the fault to slip and produce a large earthquake. If the stresses on the fault are very close to that required to make it rupture, 
to release in a great earthquake. And if this pattern of, of unlocking of the fault persists, then I would be concerned, more concerned certainly, about the possibility of a large earthquake in Southern California. So the Earth holds its secrets still, locked away, deep below the surface. The cities wait, and perhaps try and forget the greatest physical threat there is, short of nuclear war.